Right Start Mathematics Math Card Games. I am Kathleen Lawler and I'm going to be your presenter today. Flashcards. 16 divided by 4, 8 plus 6, 12 minus 3, 4 times 6, 56 divided by 8. Oh my goodness, there's 390 math facts. 9 times 5, 36 divided by 6, 6 times 8. Even if you know all of these, this is so overwhelming. And the problem with the flashcards is that only the ones who like flashcards are those that don't need them. And the ones that need the flashcards, that need the work, they don't like them and they don't want to do it. Because they just go on and on and on and they make no sense whatsoever. Even if you know the answers. Flashcards are often used to teach rote. Well, what is rote? Rote learning is based on behaviorism, where there's a stimulus, maybe a two and a three, and a response, the answer's five. So let's see what this looks like. Two, three, our response is five. Good job, everybody. Let's do it again. Two, three, but wait, today's multiplication. And all of a sudden, for some unknown reason now, the answer is Six. That's rote learning. Very confusing. Flashcards often give students the false impression that math isn't about thinking. You have to just know the answer. And in fact, that's the absolute opposite. Math is about thinking and figuring it out and calculating it. Flashcards often produce stress. Children under stress stop learning. People under stress stop learning. Well, if we're trying to teach someone and they're stressed, it's doubly hard. So flashcards isn't going to solve our problem with teaching the children their math facts. So we say, let's do card games. Why games? Games are to math like books are to reading. So when a student or a child is learning how to read, they practice their newfound skills by reading books, preferably interesting books. So using that same idea, and we put it over to math, how can we practice our newfound math skills? Well, we could do flashcards. Well, actually, we won't because we've already shown how difficult and challenging that is. Okay, well, we could do worksheets. Well, who really likes worksheets? So what we propose is let's play games. Games provide the repetition that's necessary so that we have an automatic response with what our answers to a math fact is. And more importantly, games provide an application, a reason for learning the math facts. So let's start by looking at some addition games. The first one we're going to start with is Go to the Dump, which is a spin-off of Go Fish. Our objective is to learn the facts that total 10, 1 and 9, 2 and 8, 3 and 7. And the object of the game is to collect the most pairs that equal 10. So we're going to look down on three little people here, and we're going to watch their game. We have Yellow Hat, Blue Hat, and Pink Hat. Now, we're going to be able to see their cards as we look down on them, but they cannot see each other's cards. So everybody starts by drawing five cards. And then let's go through and start to see who has any pairs. So let's look at Yellow Hat first. Does she have any pairs? Two cards that equal ten. And no, she doesn't. How about Blue Hat? Does he have any pairs, any two cards that equal 10? And he does. He has a 4 and a 6. So we're going to lay those down. And any more? No. Okay, let's go look at Pink Hat. What does she have? Well, oh, she has a 7 and 3. And she also has a 2 and an 8. I'm going to lay those right on top. Now, I want to stop here real quick and point something out. If you notice, the, the children are laying their cards side by side instead of on top of each other. And we do this for three reasons. The first reason is, is you as the parent or teacher can walk by and quickly see if the children are doing it right. So perhaps if Pink Cat has 
3 and 8, well, obviously that doesn't make 11, but we can quickly check her work and see if she's doing it correctly. Second reason is they, the children, can look and see 2 and 8, 4 and 6, and they're getting the visual reminder that that equals 10. And the third reason is the ever practical shuffling of the deck. When we keep them separated like this, the decks are already pre-shuffled. I don't have to worry about going in and shuffling it or maybe someone doing a bad shuffling job. Okay, let's keep going now. Let's start out with Yellow Hat. Yellow Hat's going to be the first one. She says, Blue Hat, do you have a three? Well, Blue Hat does. And hands it over, and Yellow Hat lays them down. Like Go Fish, Yellow Hat gets another turn. So she's looking at her two, and she says two needs an eight. So Blue Hat, do you have an eight? And Blue Hat doesn't. So he says, go to the dump. And she takes a card. Now, even if that card would be the eight that she wanted, or maybe something else that would match, and she has a pair, her turn is still over. Once you've gone to the dump, your turn is over. All right, so it's Blue Hat's turn. Blue Hat says, Pink Hat, do you have a six? And Pink Hat says, go to the dump. And he does. Pink Hat has a one in her hand, and she says, Yellow Hat, do you have a nine? And Yellow Hat does. And Pink Hat puts her pears on her piles there. Now, she's out of cards. Does this mean the game is over? No. It means that she gets five more cards. And she's going to take those five cards. And again, because she's gone to the dump, her turn is over, even if she has pears. Yellow Hat's turn. She says, Blue Hat, do you have an eight? And Blue Hat says, go to the dump. The game will continue until all the numbers are matched up, all the pairs are found. So now the question is, is who's the winner? Well, I can take the two stacks, put them on top of each other, and then compare the stacks. If you push firmly down on the cards, you can very quickly determine who has more cards or who has the higher stack. And of course, my cards are already shuffled because of the way I had laid them out. The next game we're going to look at is Rows and Columns. The objective of this game is to give the players practice in adding up to 15, and the object is to collect the most cards in a row or column that add up to 15. So we're going to start out by laying 4 by 4, and I'm going to start, and I'm going to look, and I want to find the most cards that total 15 in a row or column. Well, some of you may have already spotted the 8 and 7. Okay, that makes 15. But look at here. Here's the 9 and 6. Now, they don't have to be touching. They just need to be in the same row or column. But look at this. If I would take this 6, instead of pairing it with a 9, how about if I go with all these across the board here? That equals 15. Well, that gives me more cards. And that's what I want to do is find the most cards. Well, is there anything else I can do? No, there's not. So I'm going to take my cards, fill them in, and now it's your turn. So are you finding the 9 and 6? And how about these, the 7, 2, and 6? And that's all there is. So you take your cards, and we fill them in, and the game continues until as many cards as possible are collected. The winner, of course, is going to be the person who has the highest stack. The next game that we're going to look at is Addition War. Most people remember how to play the game War. You lay down two cards, whoever has the higher of the two cards takes both cards, and the goal of the game is to get all the cards from your buddy. Well, we're going to do something similar to that with Addition War, and we're going to each lay down two cards, add them up. Whoever has the higher sum or the higher total 
we'll take all four cards. It's a worksheet. We usually say that if, if a child spends 10 to 15 minutes with a game, that's the same thing as a worksheet. And I'll tell you what, the kids will play Edition War a whole lot longer than they'll do worksheets. The next game we're going to play is Corners. This is a favorite in many households. Here's the corner card. And our objective of this game is to practice the facts that total 5, 10, 15, and 20. And we're also going to practice mental math through scoring, which I will show you at the very end of this. Our rules is we want to match the colors. So red will always match red, green will match green, blue will match blue. In order to score, the sums must equal 5, 10, 15, or 20. And you want to play on the last card played or play to a corner provided all, this, all the sides follow the same rules. All right, let me show you how to play a game. This is my starting card, and your starting card can come from one of two places. You can either, and the directions say, the person who has the lowest green number will start. If there's two people with the lowest green number, then of those two, it's going to be the one with the lowest blue number. Or, and what I've done here in this case, is I've just pulled a card off the stack and we're going to work with it. Now, everybody will have four cards face up in front of them so everybody can see everybody else's cards. But today here, for this game right now, I'm just going to put one just to make things a little bit easier for you. So, if this is my card down here and I need to attach it to this one, Remember, colors have to match, and they need to add up to 5, 10, 15, or 20. Now, maybe you're already seeing the red 2 and 3. That would work. That'd give me 5 points. But look at my blue 7 and 8. That will give me 15 points. I think I'm going to go with that. So now I have 15 points. Now, where can I put this card? 9 has a line, 6 does not. Well, let's do the 9 and 1, the greens here. Remember, we want to add to the last card played. So we have 9 and 1. And where can I put this card? Now, some people see the 2, the red 2, and the red 8, and say, well, that would work. Well, yes, that is an that is a acceptable match. However, remember, we want to play on the last card played. So this card has to attach here. Well, let's do the blue, 6 and 4. There we go. Now, where can this card go? Well, maybe you're seeing the green, 7 and 3. Maybe you saw the red, 8 and 7. And that, of course, is going to give me more points. Or maybe, remember what I said about corners. You can do a corner at any time as long as all the numbers match up. How about if I take this black 1 and put it with this 4 and this 7, the red 7, and put it with the red 3. So it's going to look like this. Remember, you can do a corner at any time as long as the numbers match even if it's not the last card played. And this, of course, is going to give me 15 points. Now, if I had another card here, I would have to put it on this card. It's my last card. Or I can do the corner over here. All right, let's look at our three little friends and see how they're playing the game. Now, remember, when they each take their four cards, they can see each other's cards also. Well, Pink Hat seems to have the lowest green number, so she's going to throw out her card there. And she takes another card, so she always has four. Yellow Hat takes his, or excuse me, takes her turn. She says, hmm, I could put this card here or put that card there, and she does that one. And takes another card. And Blue Hat 
needs to play in the last card played. So he puts his right there. Pink Cat's turn. And she attaches to the last card played. And takes a card. Yellow Hat says, look, I can do a corner. The black numbers make 15 and the blue numbers make 10. I scored 25. And Blue Hat plays on the last card played. Wow, got 10 and 10, make 20 points. Takes a card. And Pink Hat has two corners to check. And she's going to check and see if she can do either one of these corners or, of course, play on the last card played. When this game is done, the scores, for if you have four people playing, the scores will be in the high 100s or the low 200s. So with this game, the players are learning the facts that total 5, 10, 15, and 20. Each player benefits from doing a cumulative scoring or mental math. Working in the hundreds gives the player a better understanding of large quantities. And there's 20 variations of this game available. Now remember when I was talking about mental math, let me show you how that is. This is what a scorecard would look like. I have 10, I scored 15 points. I did not write down one and five, draw the line, carry the one and write down 25. I'm just putting in what the answer is. So I'm mentally saying 10 plus 15 is 25. 25 plus 5 is 30. And we're building like that. Now you may wonder, how do you have the children do that? Well, we will teach them as part of the game to break their scores down. So let's say I start out with 75. And I'm going to start by saying 15 is 10 and 5 more. So let's add the 10 first. 75 plus 10 is 85, and then plus 5 more is 90. This is the way that the students in Finland are taught. And anyone who's up on how different countries do, you'll, you know that Finland is the top. They have the top math scores. All right, let's look at some multiplication games. But before we do that, I would like to show you the patterns with skip counting. Well, first of all, let's start with the twos. Everybody knows the twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, all the way up. But have you ever noticed how when you line them up, that the twos follow each other and the fours, sixes, eights, zeros? Notice how this second row is ten more than the first. Let's look at the fours. The fours do the same thing. See how the numbers line up? The fours, the eights, the twos, the sixes. This row is 20 more than this row. The sixes and eights do the same thing. They follow down. The sixes, the second row is 30 more, and the eights, the second row is 40 more. There's something else in the eights I would like you to notice. Look at how this is backwards. Eight, six, four, two, zero. And look at my tens. Zero, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's all these beautiful patterns in the multiplication skip counting numbers. Let's look at the nines. A lot of people know the nines, but let me point them out just in case. Now, if you notice, this is doing five, and then we come back this way. Part of the reason why we do that is it's easy to see that you have one eight, eight one, two seven, seven two. Notice that all the digits add in mean, the number add up to nine. One and eight, two and seven, three and six, four and five. Also, too, look at the ones. I have 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Look at the tens. They do the reverse. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 
Well, what about the threes? They have some really cool patterns. Does anyone see it? Let's start down here at the bottom. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Everything in the first row is zeros. Everything in the second row is ones, twos, and threes. There's still another pattern in the threes. Look at this first row. Look how all these digits add up to three. Two and one, one and two, three and zero. And look, this next column adds up to all sixes. And the last column, all the digits of each number add up to nine. What about the sevens? Is there a pattern in the sevens? Well, now most of you are getting pretty good probably at finding them. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Look at the tens. I have zero, one, two, two, three, four, four, five, six, and seven. Now, although this is interesting, where does it help? Well, if I, let's say I cross this number out here and you can't see it. And I know that there's something there. Well, I know it's going to be one, two, three. So it's going to be a two here. And here it's two, three, four. So given the pattern, I can figure out this number. Should I have forgotten it? But of course, we're going to practice this by playing games. The first game we're going to play is very simple. It's called Mystery Product Card. I'm going to lay out the cards in the pattern that mimics what we've learned, and then we turn one card over and ask, what's missing? Well, again, I can see it's nine, hmm, seven, six, five, five, this must be an eight, and all the tens are ones, so one, one, this must be one, eight. And sure enough, I flip it over, it is 18. Very simple, but fun. The second game I want to show you is Multiples Memory. The objective of this game is to help the players learn the multiples, and the object of the game is to be the first player to collect all 10 cards of a multiple in order. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the sevens. Now if you notice, this is an envelope. The sevens envelope has the 10 cards in here, 7, 14, 21, 28, all the way up. So we're going to take the sevens, and we're going to take the eights, and then we're going to keep this next to us, this envelope next to us, so that we can see the pattern until I become very good at seeing it without it actually being in front of me, so I can see it in my mind's eye. So I took out all 20 of the cards, 10 from the sevens, 10 from the eights, shuffled them, and laid them down. So here we have the sevens, and again, I have this pattern next to me, so I can refer to it when I need to, and the eights. And I want to collect them in order. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start. So I pick the first card, and I pick a 14. Now, do I need a 14? I do, but not yet, because remember, I want to pick them up in order. So I turn it back over. And now it's your turn. You're the eights. So you pick a card and you pick a 40. Do you need a 40? Well, we do, but not yet. So remember where that is. My turn again. I'm going to pick this one. Oh, dear. Well, I don't need that one. So I turn it over. It's your turn. And I suppose you want to pick that eight. Very good. Now, when you put it over here, you're going to line them up. So you're going to have two rows of five, whereas I'm going to mimic my pattern and have three rows of three and one more. Like a regular memory game, because you found one card, you get another turn. Oh, you turned over a 56. Who needs the 56? We both do. 
Now, there's another 56 in here. We just don't know where it is. So turn it back over. And it's my turn. And I'm going to pick this one. Hey, it's a 7. So I pick it up and I lay it down. I get another turn. Let's see, 14. I've seen the 14. It's right here. Ha-ha. And I get another turn. And now, oh, a 24. Well, I don't need that. So I turn it over. And the game progresses until everybody has collected all 10 of their cards. The next game we're going to look at is Multiplication Memory. The objective of this game is to help the players master the multiplication facts. The object of the game is to collect the most cards by matching the multiplier with the product. Oh, look, we have our friends back. Goody, another math game. And Blue Hat says, yippee, thanks, Mom. So since we're using the threes for this game, we're going to take a little note and write three times. And then I'm going to take my basic cards, one through ten, and lay, shuffle them. Lay them face down. Take another little note and write equals. And then I'm going to take my 10 cards, the 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, shuffle them and lay them down. And now what I want to do is I want to match the multiplier with the product. So Pink Cat's going to go first. And she turns over a 5. And she says 3 taken 5 times is 15. So she's looking for the 15 in the blue cards. And she found a 21. She turns them over. And now Blue Hat gets his turn. And he turns over a 7. 3 taken 7 times is 21. And he's looking for a 21. He found it! So he picks those two cards up. They're a pair. And like our memory games, he gets another turn. Now he's turning over the three. Three taken three times is nine. And he finds a 12. Well, that doesn't match. Turn him over. And it's Pink Hat's turn. And she finds a four. <gasps> Three taken four times is 12. I've seen the 12. And she finds it. And she has a pair. And she gets another turn. And the game progresses until, again, we have everything matched up. Pink Hat says, that was fun. And Blue Hat says, let's play again. All right, let's look at some fraction games. But before we do that, I want to show you a study that was done. This study was looking at the differences between teaching for rote or teaching for concept, where you, you build in the understanding or you explain why things are happening. And they wanted to know when a child was taught different methods, how quickly could they recall or how accurately could they recall the answer. Well, the children were taught two different ways, and they said, well, what happens immediately? What percent can recall given the two different methods of teaching? Those that were taught rote had an immediate recall of 32%, whereas those that were taught the concept had a 69% recall. Well, what happens as time passes? How about after one day. Rote dropped down to 23% and concept stayed the same. After four weeks, then what happened? Those that were taught the rote method had 8% recall. Those that were taught the concept had 58% recall. Almost double those that were taught rote with an immediate question and answer. So the con conceptual teaching far outweighs the rote. So let's apply this to fractions. 
So let's look at the fraction chart. This is a linear fraction chart where I have one broken into two equal parts, three equal parts, four equal parts, all the way down. And let's start by asking some very basic questions. How many fourths are in a whole? Well, we have one, two, three, four. I can very easily see the answer. I know this sounds a bit silly to ask the question, but you'd be surprised at how many people don't know the answer. So how many sixths in a whole? There's six. So let's practice this by playing a game. Concentrating on one. The objective of this game is to realize that two halves and three thirds, four fourths, and so forth equal one. And the object of the game is to collect the most pairs of fractions totaling one. Now this is a preset group of cards so that there will be all matches. The math card games book will tell you which cards are in here. And of course, we have our fraction chart there. So let's start by turning over one card. I find three fifths. Go over to my fraction chart. Here's three fifths. And how many more fifths do I need to make one? I need two fifths. So that's what I'm looking for is the two fifths. And I'm going to turn over this card. Hey, I got two fifths. So I have a pair. All right, let's do our next one. I turn over 7 eighths. On my chart, here's 7 eighths. And what more do I need to make one? I need another eighth right there. So let's take a card. I'm going to turn over this one. Oh, shoot. That's not 1 eighth. So this is not a pair. I turn them back over again. It seems like such a simple game, but it's so important because if a child does not understand what makes one, fractions is just going to be a nightmare. Well, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to play fraction war. Now, when you get your fraction charts, you will actually get two of them. One you're going to keep whole, you're going to keep intact, and the other one you're going to cut apart, and so you have pieces. Well, I'm going to take my cut apart pieces, and I just want the ones, halves, fourths, and eighths. Now, I'm going to do something here that you can't do in real life, but looks really cool. I'm going to erase my horizontal lines, and I'm going to get rid of my little red numbers. And what does that look like? It's a ruler. Who would have guessed? So with this fraction war game, our objective is to provide practice in comparing two fractions from the halves, fourths, and eighths so it can help us read a ruler. And our object of the game is to capture all the cards from our friend. So here we have our fraction chart. This is going to be me. And that can be you. And like a regular war game, we each lay down one card. And we're going to see who has more. Now, how many times have you asked a child, which is more, one eighth or one fourth? And they answer sometimes one eighth because they say the eight is bigger than four. Therefore, this must be bigger. Well, let's look at our chart. Here's one eighth. Here's one fourth. Oh, okay, one-fourth is bigger. So you take those two cards. All right, let's lay out some more. Five-eighths and three-fourths. Here's five-eighths. And here's your three-fourths. Oh, yep, yours is bigger again. Huh. All right, well, let's lay out another war. I got to win one of these. Ooh, goody, we have a war now. One half and one half. We each lay down an extra card and then turn them over and see who has more. 
I have seven eighths, which is right here, and you have three fourths, which is right there. I have more. Now, little quick note, my son and I were playing this game and we were about a half an hour into it and we had almost this exact thing where he had seven eighths and I had three fourths. And he looked at it and he said, Mama, I beat you by an eighth. And he sure did. Now that's not the point of the game, but see, he because he understood it, because he understood the concept, he was already able to, to go beyond the answer and start to expand it. And he was already, well, actually, he was actually subtracting fractions. And that wasn't even the point of the game. But because he understood it, he understood how the fractions worked. He was able to go beyond what we were doing. So in this particular case, when I have seven eighths, you have three fourths, I get to take them all. Once we get good at that, then we can play the harder fraction war game. The objective of this game is to help compare the magnitude of unrelated fractions. And the object of the game, of course, is to get as many cards from our buddy as we can. And sometimes, because this can end up being a long game, you may want to put a limit, a time limit or a quantity of maybe how many wars. So, of course, we're going to use our full fraction chart. And let's just say we lay down, I lay down four ninths, and you have three sevenths. Whose is more? Well, let's go to our fraction chart. Here's four ninths. There's three sevenths. Ho, ho, ho. I beat you by just a hair. And see how easy this is when you have the fraction chart. So in conclusion, why do we play games? Because games are to math like books are to reading. Games provide the repetition that's necessary for the automatic responses so that children know their math facts. And more importantly, the games provide an application for what they're learning. Thank you for listening to the Right Start Math presentation. If you have any questions or you would like to look more information up, please go to our website, rightstartmath.com. Thank you.